Dr. Amitabh Saran, uh, who represents uh, or is in the business of uh, looking at electric vehicles. Uh, so today, uh, Dr. Saran, uh, there is a lot of focus on EVs from the government side, and a lot of states have also announced incentives to drive uh, EV adoption in the last couple of months. Uh, we are also seeing that, especially in three-wheelers uh, segment for last mile distribution, there is some traction as far as the EVs are concerned. Concurrently, we have got this concept of ESD, which is gaining a uh, lot of traction in the Indian context as well, which is driving companies to uh, look at EV adoption. So how is Altigreen helping logistics companies and end customers go electric and go up the sustainability ladder? How do you think the uh, future is going to shape up? How has been the response to your products? Uh, and lastly, do you also see charging infrastructure to be a hurdle when it comes to adoption of electric vehicles? Thank you, Ajay. Um, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, warm welcome to everyone. Um, so very loaded question, Ajay, and um, um, I think it uh, it's clear that the government uh, and the recent two-day-old uh, you know, um, UN report is a clear indication that, uh, you know, sustainability is an important and key um, uh, asset that every country has to build. Otherwise, uh, you know, the future is very clear. The writing is on the wall. As far as Altigreen is concerned over the last eight years, uh, yeah, as a startup, we've been around for the last eight years. We realized that if we want to bring change into India and the emerging markets, the first thing that has to be done is to realize that our main competition is from fossil fuel vehicle, not from other electric vehicles. So you can't bring in something from another geography and expect it to operate in the, uh, in the scenarios in India. If you have to make a sustainable difference in our country or in the emerging markets, and when I say emerging markets, I mean South Asia, Africa, and South America, um, we need to make sure that the solutions are built to the differentiated needs of the geography. And I think some of them have been alluded to in the past, but the larger one with respect to the environment, whether it is water logging, whether it is potholes, dust, pebbles, unprofessional driving behaviors. I, you know, people may differ, but I've not come across a last mile delivery guy who's been to driving school ever. They start off as, uh, you know, Chotu wiping the, um, the vehicle and then they graduate to becoming a driver one day, right? So. Nothing wrong with it, but that's the reality. So until we can build a vehicle that can cater to this reality, it will not make a sustainable difference. Yes, you will have vehicles. We've had uh, good electric vehicles in this country from back in 2001. We've had e-rickshaws in this country for the last five or six years and, and a million and a half of them. It's not that we've not had electric vehicles that have generated employment for people. But if you want to make a sustainable difference, I come back to this, you have to create something that is built for the needs of this geography. It doesn't matter if you're bringing it from China or from Japan or Europe or US, it has to be built for these countries needs. So first of all, it's the infrastructure and what you build for it. The second is an understanding of the usage of a vehicle. I think in traditional fossil fuel vehicles, you had a one size fits all. You know, you create a vehicle by weight and say that this is a one-ton vehicle, the two-ton vehicle, the four-ton vehicle, you know, that's the traditional uh, thing. But when it comes to last mile, it's being made very clear that the deliveries are more volumetric based, right? It's not so much about the dead weight as much as it is the packaging that goes along with it. And hence, you know, different application usages are coming out whether it is uh, you know ultra fast and fresh where you're constantly delivering something coming back to the depot delivering coming back to the depot versus carrying you know an entire truckload and going somewhere and then dropping it off at multiple stops so there's a change in applications and hence now electric vehicles will have to be built cater to these needs so the important thing from an electric vehicle perspective has to be number one the building blocks you mean the motors, the controllers, the electric, all the electric system, you know, um, the display clusters, the all the electronics and the software that sits in it has to be built for this need, which means that, uh, you know, you have to make it IP67, you have to make it something that can withstand a 30G shock. You know, that's the kind of thing that uh, day to day, 
anything that is considered abuse anywhere in the world is considered to be a day to day normal scenario in india so we need to first do that number 2 electric vehicle companies will have to create platforms will al which allow many versions of many variants of products that can be given according to the needs of each of these verticals this one size fits all i believe is not very efficient when it comes to electric mobility because we are still constrained by the battery pack you know batteries continue to be expensive the government of india is helping a lot state government subsidies are helping a lot but you'll be surprised that uh, over a period of time the kind of energy densities that have increased and the prices of batteries that are coming down globally we are certain that there is going to be a parity in this even today on a total cost of ownership basis um there is a 30 to 40% benefit that a customer gets if he moves to evs from our perspective we are focusing on that we have 26 global patents granted on the technologies that we have created so far so everything from the first motor the first steel lamination that goes into a motor to the final vehicle that rolls out of faulty green it is almost 100% domestic value add why i say almost is because india doesn't make cells for battery india doesn't make microprocessors because we don't have fab plants yet semiconductor fab plants so those are the only things that we need to import the rest is something that is domestic value add and we cater it very um, specifically to india's needs as far as charging is concerned we realize that you know we can't wait till ubiquitous charging becomes a reality in this country and hence we've got to make vehicles that can charge on any of these 220 volt sockets that are available across country now i'm not saying that i expect that every kholi wala will be in a position to charge his uh, his vehicle but at the same time when i'm catering to the organized b2b or the unorganized b2b the smaller fleets they do have the opportunity of being able to charge it we've created battery packs that have been arai tested for 181 kilometers to a single charge i know with abuse with overloading with everything that comes with last mile transport in india you will still be able to get 110 120 kilometers on a single charge and that all comes from the same premise that we started we are not in the transportation business we are in the peace of mind business i need to make sure that my vehicle is constantly being tracked so uh, just like we heard about here technologies our vehicles are completely connected all the time to telematics which is inbuilt into it whether it is for our components whether it's for the vehicle whether it's for the battery pack so that's how we believe that we've been able to take care of not just india's needs but also from a you know charging perspective uh, to make sure that as the charging infrastructure goes we will still be in a position to make sure that our vehicles remain relevant today they can be charged on any 220 volt socket tomorrow they are capable of getting charged through fast charging infrastructure that is main that is that is coming about so i think net net um it's important for all ev players in this country to realize that fossil fuel is our competitor it's not other ev players we don't have to compete and say mini motor 8 kilowatt your motor is 8 and a half kilowatt it doesn't make a difference ultimately it will be can it compete with the nearest competitor which is diesel does it have that kind of uh, um uh, you know staying power over 130 year old technology that has been around has catered to the needs of each of these geographies i think that's the value add that we bring about and we seem to be doing fairly well in that today we have customers across the country we are eligible to sell in 14 states most of the e-commerce fmcg companies have already become our customers we operate through both the dco model as well as um through and uh, the 3pls who work with us um, um the vehicle financing warranties um, you know all that has been made available there are challenges there's no doubt about it it's taken us 8 years to get here but we are focusing on fundamentals and saying that is what going to make a difference so that's my case